This video was made possible by our YouTube channel members. Support the channel today by using the link in the video description below. We are all familiar with the RMS Carpathia, the ship that rescued the survivors of the Titanic in 1912. What was her life like before and after the sinking of the Titanic? How did she help save the Cunard Line from going bankrupt? And how was it that she was sent to her own watery grave? In this video, we will explore the rise and fall of the world's most famous rescue ship. In the late 1890s, Cunard Line began designing a new class of liners for the transatlantic passenger route. This would allow them to compete with rival shipping companies ferrying large amounts of tourists and emigrant passengers from Europe to America. While Cunard's largest liners as of 1898, the RMS Campania and RMS Lucania, had a reputation for size and speed, these new ships would focus on trying to maximise profitability for the Cunard Line in order to remain solvent enough to fend off any takeover attempts by the International Mercantile Marine. Cunard would achieve this by building three new ships that would transport high amounts of both cargo and passengers across the Atlantic. These ships were the Ivernia, the Saxonia and their running mate, the Carpathia. Completed in 1903 and primarily serving the transatlantic route, Carpathia along with her running mates were so successful that the profits from the three ships allowed Cunard Line to stay financially afloat in the 1900s. It also later helped fund the construction of Cunard's new express liners, the Lusitania and the Mauritania. These two new liners would dominate the transatlantic route and would put Cunard Line back on top for size, speed and luxury. While luxury was not the priority of the Carpathia and her running mates, she did offer her passengers a safe and comfortable crossing of the North Atlantic. However, she was complimented for having some of the finest spaces aboard for the lower class passengers. This included good ventilation, heating and a third class dining saloon that spanned the full length of the ship. In 1905, just two years after being built, Carpathia had a major refit and was transformed to serve the Mediterranean route. She had new first class staterooms installed, increasing her passenger capacity from 1700 to over 2500, with 250 being first and second class passengers and 2200 being third class passengers. For several years, the Carpathia would serve the Mediterranean route, ferrying rich passengers and immigrants across the Atlantic to the New World. On April 11, 1912, the Carpathia departed New York for a week's long pleasure cruise bound for Fiume, Austria, Hungary, with 740 passengers. In the early hours of the 15th of April 1912, Carpathia's wireless operator received a distress call from the RMS Titanic, which had struck an iceberg and was sinking fast. Once the Titanic's coordinates were received, the Carpathia's captain, Arthur Ostrin, turned the ship around and headed full speed for the Titanic. It took nearly four hours for the Carpathia to reach Titanic's position, by at which point the Great Liner had sunk with hundreds of passengers in the freezing cold water. While en route to Titanic, Carpathia dodged several icebergs in the ice field and at one point nearly collided with one which could have been disastrous. In the inquiry after the sinking of the Titanic, when asked how he managed to avoid so many icebergs and safely navigate his ship in the middle of the night, Captain Rostron, a deeply religious man, simply said, I can only conclude, another hand than mine was on the helm that night. After the Titanic survivors boarded the Carpathia, the captain turned the ship back around and headed for New York, with over double the passengers on board before it left port. The Carpathia safely arrived at Pier 54 in New York on the night of April 18, 1912, where Captain Rostron and his crew were praised for their heroic actions on the night of the Titanic sinking. They also received several medals and trophy cups, including one from Titanic passenger Molly Brown, thanking them for their service. The Carpathia would continue to serve the Mediterranean route up until 1914, when the ship and her running mates were brought into military service after the outbreak of the First World War. Painted in a dark grey camouflage, the Carpathia would transport American and Canadian troops across the Atlantic to Europe. On July 15, 1918, the Carpathia departed on her final voyage from Liverpool in a convoy bound for Boston, carrying 57 passengers and 166 crew members. During the voyage, the convoy was split in half, leaving the Carpathia, which was now the largest ship in the convoy, to lead six other vessels. However, due to her now being an easier target and moving at a snail's pace, 
she was spotted by the German submarine U-55 and was torpedoed. Shortly after the first torpedo hit, a second torpedo was fired which struck the engine room killing five crew members and disabling the ship entirely. The six other ships in the convoy all steamed away to avoid being sunk by the German U-boat. As she sank her over 200 passengers and crew boarded the lifeboats while Carpathia's chief officer threw confidential war papers overboard into the sea to keep them out of enemy hands. Once everybody had made it off the Carpathia, the German submarine resurfaced to fire a third and final torpedo. About two and a half hours after the first torpedo struck, Carpathia disappeared beneath the waves off the southern coast of Ireland with the loss of five crew. Carpathia remained lost until 82 years after her sinking. In the year 2000 she was discovered by American author Clive Cussler, famous for writing the 1976 novel Raise the Titanic. The wreck of the Carpathia is currently owned by Premier Exhibitions, also known as RMS Titanic Inc, which plans to recover objects from the wreck in the near future. While the Carpathia met a fate like many other ocean liners throughout the First World War, the role she played in the rescue of Titanic survivors and her long successful passenger service as well as her contributions to the First World War have sealed her legacy for over a century. The Carpathia, which was built as a basic ship to help Cunard recoup their profits, accomplished so much in her career and is perhaps one of the most famous rescue ships of all time. <laughs>